Hi everyone and welcome back to our new computer vision series. In the last episode, we had a quick demonstration on OCR or optical character recognition. And before we continue in this video, let's jump into a little bit of intuition involving OCR. As we're familiar with the previous episode, if you haven't had a chance to go through it, please go through it because we ended up setting up Tesseract and Pi Tesseract since we're working with the Pi Tesseract wrapper for Tesseract, the Python wrapper. When we are working with OCR, there are, and similar to other areas of AI, machine learning, data science, always multiple approaches to a problem in the manner of how you're going to solve it. When working with OCR, especially with files in the PDF format, we usually have to pre-process and manipulate data from the PDF to convert it to file formats such as PNG or JPG that allow us an easier method to further build with. Some methods of just working around that PDF file since they can be a little challenging to work with in general. We can see the following libraries heavily utilized since they provide us with some abilities for the data and file pre-processing. Tesseract is seen as one of the main OCR engines by Google used for text detection on mobile devices, video, Gmail, image, spam detection, and more. If you're looking for any additional information on Tesseract, you can visit the following link. OpenCV, we are familiar with. If you're not familiar with OpenCV, it's definitely one of the main libraries used for computer vision related operations. You can explore the documentation because OpenCV does do a good job of some of the documentation of the processes. And some additional ones, since there are a variety, a uh, newer one is called Camelot. It actually has PDF table extractions. You can visit the following GitHub link to find out more about that. Then you have APIs. So Google Cloud Vision API, AWS Recognition API. These are APIs specifically built and tailored for computer vision related operations as well. For OCR, text detection, you can run some simple queries with the API off images and other methods to build text and OCR related algorithms. All right, with that being said, I just wanted to touch on a little bit of related information for those of you who are looking to continue to work with OCR, maybe branch out, customize the algorithms. I highly recommend exploring some of the links that I have on the following slide that we're looking at right now. In this video, we're going to continue working with OCR. So let's fire up Spider, get into our algorithm that we were working with before. We're also going to have to launch a terminal to run a few quick installations. All right, so we're back in Spider. We have our following demonstration from the previous video, also our files here. We're gonna be working with this AI handbook from our Artificial Intelligence A through Z course on Udemy. And we need to set up the following installations. We want WAND and NLTK. To install WAND, depending on your operating system, you can use the easy install or pip, recommend the pip install WAND command. And if you need to install image magic, if it's not already set up on your system, you can find the distribution here for your system to install the requirements as well. We also need NLTK. You can also use the command here, the pip install NLTK to get that set up. Once that is installed, and if you have any questions about the installation, please feel free to comment on the video. I'd be more than happy to help assist you with the installations. But let's jump back into Spider. And on a quick note, remember, when you launch a terminal, if you're working in Spider, if you're working with the created environment, remember to activate it and then run the installation commands to install within that environment. So Mac and Linux, source, activate, then the environment name, Windows, just activate, and then the environment name, all right? Then you would run your installation commands to install within that specific environment. Let me exit out of these. We're back here. I'm going to drag these and get rid of this spacing here so we can organize them. We don't need any duplicates here and also remove them as well. And we're working with a PDF file now. So the first thing we want to do, and we talked about kind of working around or data preparation, data manipulation. So we're going to use some processing from one. We're going to use the following with image. Now we need to add our file name. I actually don't want these in capitals. We want the file name. We have to specify the file that we're working with. So we're working with the AI handbook.pdf, working that PDF file, which can be tricky. We want to add a resolution setting. So let's set the resolution to 300. We need to close parentheses as our image. And then we'll also need to specify our image compression quality. We can set this to 99 
and we want to save the image in a specific format. So image save file name equals, and now we're specifying our image name example and the type of file that we want to save it to. Basically here, we're converting this PDF since it is multiple pages, we're splitting it up into individual pages so we can then read OCR and we can run our OCR detection through the PDF. So we're taking our PDF and we're running it through this. It's going to make more sense once we can actually do it. So let's run it and we're going to get some data back split into PDF images. So let's run this. And once that's run, we can see the image name and we have our example images zero through 10. It's 10 pages long. So we have our following images set. So now that we have our images, we have our 10 images run from the PDF. Again, this is a way to work with that PDF file format. And I apologize for this very rudimentary photo, but this is kind of what we're going for here. We're using computer vision. So we have our text. We have our file that we want to run OCR on. We want to get that data back. So now we have our images. We can also run them now to extract the data similar to what we did in the first video, because the goal would be to actually integrate now in this specific example to integrate natural language processing algorithms. So either entity extraction, semantic analysis, sentence parsing, or you could even combine them with APIs. So we mentioned those APIs earlier, the Google cloud vision API, AWS recognition API, or since we already have the text extracted, you can really look to actually use that text to a whole range of APIs that are already existing and built out there. The main part is to take our text. We want to run the OCR. So we have those characters recognized so that we can eventually run the needed processes here. We're going to go through and actually use NLTK. That's why we set up NLTK before. So let's jump back into our file and work on that. We can actually use the first part that we have already built from the first video. So let's grab this. We can actually use this. Let's kind of clean it up a little bit. Do not want to delete that. We can have the following there going to add this here. Okay. And I want to run the demo. Let's take uh, image name example one. So we need to swap the following format out or the, excuse me, the following name out. Let's add our image. You can use this for the image that you want. Example one dot JPG. We want to print the text. That's fine. We also can run this now before we get into the NLTK. So we can run and let's wait for it to return the information. So it ran OCR on our image and we can see the following information displayed. If you want to check it, if we want to launch that image example, we can compare the image re return to us. Okay, fantastic. What we want to do here, since we actually have that data, we've already run OCR, we've already recognized the characters, we have that data. So what can we do here as a quick example, let's integrate some NLTK. So let's set our example here, example equal to our text. Since that's the data that we're working with, we have example as our text. Let's define a little pre process here, call it sent sent equals our NLTK dot word tokenize and sent equal NLTK the part of sentence tagging for sent. We want to return it. What this is going to do is going to break down our text. And this comes in very handy when you're working with natural language processing. If you're building chat pots or sentence parsers, if you want to really understand the structure of the data it comes in very, very useful in machine learning and natural language processing. So we can finalize this by returning our sent as we did before. We also want to set our sent equal to pre-process. We want it on our example for our text. And I'm also going to add a print statement just so we can have that added as well. We can run this again. Let's run it. I'm going to actually clear this so we can see it a little bit better. Let's run our clear. I want to run the following block of code. All right, let's give it a moment to process and it should be returning the part of sentence and the tokenizer. And there we have it. 
we can see that it actually took our data, see how it's actually taking the individual words, giving us the tokenizer, giving us the part of sentence as well. If you want to look up the tables for NLTK, it has great documentation, so you can actually see the sentence structure, how this kind of formulates and is grouped, or actually how it distributes the parts of the sentence. But this is just a quick example. If we jump back into that diagram, we can really think about how we ran OCR, very basic form of OCR, taking our PDF, manipulating it to a JPG format, breaking it down into individual pages. So we have our data recognized. And then once it's recognized, we're running our other algorithms or other parts of our algorithm for, and for our example was NLTK, the part of sentence tagging and tokenizing. But you can work with entity extraction and the other examples listed here. Just a very quick brief example, but really shows you the power of OCR. Once you have that data extracted, you really open up a lot of doors of what you can do with it. Excellent job so far working through everything. Hope you guys are having fun with this series. We're going to wrap things up here, so I will see you in the next video. As always, don't forget to subscribe to the Super Data Science channel. Just an incredible way to stay up to date with what's going on in the industry. If you have any questions and comments, ideas, please feel free to share them as well below the video, and I'll see you in the next one.